It's Peter Hitchens, journalist and author and writer for The Mail on Sunday. Welcome to the show, Peter. Hello. So what's your view, Peter? Should we... I know that I'm, I'm, I'm throwing two completely separate questions at you, which one is the medicinal use of cannabis and the other one is recreational. So let's take them one at a time. What do you feel about legalising the medicinal use of cannabis in this country? Well, I'm happy to legalise any drug that's been proven in serious double-blind tests to be effective and um, which has also been proven not to have dangerous side effects. This is a long and complicated process, and in first world countries it can take many years before any drug can be so approved, and it seems to me to be very rash as a rush into the legalization of any drug whatsoever on the basis of what is, is, at the moment is, is, is basically a great rush of national emotion. I'm terribly sympathetic to, to, to Ms. Caldwell and, and the plight of her child, as who is not. Uh, but that doesn't blind me to the fact that in, in serious countries which have proper medical systems, you're very careful about what you actually legalize and prescribe as a drug. I, I always raise it in this matter when people go on about the supposedly magical properties of medicinal cannabis, uh, that thalidomide was extremely effective against morning sickness in pregnant women. Uh, but it turned out to have an extremely deadly side effect, which, uh, which made its use in that area completely impossible. So you have to be careful with drugs, and I think people should not rush to judgment over it just because they are quite rightly sympathetic uh, to a woman and her child who are having a horrible experience with a very, very grave illness. So in your view, if we take um, a proper study and if we take it seriously on the, on the road to perhaps considering uh, legalising it, then if it all comes out to be... Uh, kosher, let's say, if it all comes down to, to be that it does help certain people and, uh, you know, if you do the proper studies, the double-blind studies, yes, as you said, you, you then you wouldn't have a problem about, legalising it. But you can't, with about 10 ifs there, and, and, and legalising in the case of licensed medicines involves allowing them to be prescribed by qualified doctors in, in strictly limited quantities. Sure. Uh, yeah, and, and what you must understand here is that I, all, there has very, very, very long time the campaign, the extremely well-funded billionaire campaign for the legalisation of, of, of cannabis, so that it can be advertised and sold and can ruin people's lives in the way that tobacco has done in, in millions and millions of cases, while people roll in profits from that. As well as alcohol. That, camp, that, that campaign. Well, I, I completely agree with you. But they're, 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 the, these things, the, the alcohol and, and tobacco, are two poisons which we have legalised, and they're irreversibly legalised. And it seems to me. If you don't like them, then it would be very, very foolish to, to rush into legalizing another irreversible uh, poison in, in our society. So that, that, that cuts no ice me at all as an argument. The, the point that I'm making is that the, the campaigners for the legalization of, of marijuana have for a very, very long time been using uh, the medical cannabis argument as a d deliberate way of getting good public relations for the drug they want to legalize. Indeed, a man called Keith Stroop a very senior official in the National Organization for Marijuana Legalization in the United States, one of the oldest and, and indeed best funded uh, campaigns for cannabis legalization in the world, said in 1979 that they would use uh, medical marijuana as a red herring to get Pot a good name. But Peter, you he talk about... He said, he, said, he said this on the record in, a, in an American university magazine called The Emery Wheel, and I've seen a copy of it. He, it, it this was openly said. It was probably an error on his part to say it, but that has been a large element in this. The, the, the whole promotion of cannabis as a medicine, I and mean, maybe cannabis is a medicine, but it, it shouldn't blind us to the fact that as a, as a drug on open sale, it would be disastrous for our society. It's increasingly correlated with severe, lifelong, incurable mental illness. Anybody who has any experience of the lock boards of our mental hospitals will tell you uh, that cannabis is involved in a huge number of cases that reach them. You need to consult with Professor Sir Robin Murray, one of the country's leading psychiatrists, about the role of cannabis in a large amount of mental illness in our country. And this is just emerging. It's only been known, really, in, in, in the research where it's only beginning to pile up the correlation between cannabis use and mental illness. But, Peter, I'm sorry. I, I've got, so I've got to... Peter, not, you are... are you Peter, about? I'm really sorry. I, I, sorry I would, I'm, I'm sorry about the fact that you are absolutely 
talking a, a nonsense here. I well, know, nonsense. I know. I, I went to university. Nonsense, I went to university right? and lots and lots of people smoked cannabis. And let me tell yes. you, I keep in touch with a lot of those friends. They don't have a mental illness. They're actually really successful people. They haven't gone on to hard drugs. So, I, 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 you know, I, and I, I've, got, I've got a small I, I, sample I, 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 here. So what me. are the dangerous excuse side me. effects? Answer, what are the dangerous side effects me. of cannabis? If you'll excuse me. First of all, I haven't said that everybody who smokes cannabis becomes mentally ill any more than everybody who smokes cigarettes gets lung cancer. Yeah. But a lot of people, a lot of people do. And if a, if a drug is, is but a lot of people caught, don't. If a drug, if you let me finish the point, if a, if a, you had a long interrupted go at the beginning of the program, if you if you if you find that it, the use of a drug is strongly correlated with a with, with a serious illness, then you're very cautious, aren't you, about legalizing it if it is already illegal? You were talking earlier about sugar and tobacco and alcohol. These things are legal already. The point about marijuana in this country is that it is illegal. Uh, you can, in theory, get quite a long prison sentence for possessing it under the 1971 Misuse of Drugs Act. But the, 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 the question which is being raised at the moment is whether it should be made legal. And that, in my view, would be a first step towards total legalization, open advertising, mass sale, and, and, and big dope becoming as wicked and powerful in our country. And transparency. And transparency. But, whatever Pete, that means. But, Peter, Peter, I want to go back to, to what you think, because you, you're suggesting that the sort of getting the medicinal, winning the medicinal argument is is the first step to what exactly? Do you think well, that there's... Of, it's part of a public... Cannabis has very powerful public relations campaigns. So many billions of, of dollars are spent on the, on the campaign to legalise cannabis by very rich people all the time. And it has excellent public relations. And part of those public relations is the association of it with, with medical use. It may be medically useful. But if, if, if you manage to get, if this campaign manages to get marijuana legalized in, in, in the Western world, which is being quite successful at the moment, will it be in 10 years' time, will we be having a campaign for medicinal cocaine? I, I, or, or, well, or, no, because cocaine or, doesn't, or, or have, medicinal, doesn't have, or, doesn't or, have or, any... Or medicinal, wait, cocaine doesn't have I'm any... Putting it, I'm putting it to you. If you, there, you, you, can, you can state that there's a medicinal use of practically anything, a nightshade or, or, or asparagus. Sure. But the, the, the question is, why is it that there is such a huge amount of effort being, being devoted to promoting the idea that cannabis is a useful medicine? Is it because cannabis is a miracle medicine? Which it may be, though it seems to me that the, the, the conclusive research on this is rather lacking. Or is it because, uh, by promoting cannabis as a medicine, it softens its image as a, as a drug which might then be legalised? I think it's the latter. But that's that's what I'm, I'm getting to the nub of, because two things. First of all, funnily enough, we do use cocaine for medicinal purposes. I believe they're the base of the injections that you'll get from your dentist. Uh, so uh, we, uh, have, uh, we have uh, discovered a use for, for cocaine that we use on a medicinal purpose. But but what I'm what I'm trying to get to the nub of is you're you're perfectly happy to say well if it's proven medicinally that it's it's good for you then maybe maybe we should consider that but you are trying to make the implication that it's the thin end end of the wedge for these people who want us to turn into having uh, cannabis freely available for uh, recreation and, and I'm just trying to find not, out I'm who not, these people I'm, are I'm because not making, I'm not making I'm not making an implication I'm explicitly stating. Okay, but, but because the, the, I did... the, the extremely extremely powerful rich greed lobby, which which seeks for the, le the legalization. But who are these of, people? Of, of... Because 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 how are they going to profit? Because the way well, I see you, it at the moment, Peter, up, it, it's easy for you to check who they are. The Los Angeles Times covered the the campaign for the for, for the legalization of marijuana in, in California recently, Proposition sixty four. You just look up. But the how are they going to make the money? Look Think about Billy, it, Peter. Billy, Billy, look up, look up. How are they making? There's huge <laughs> amounts of money already but... being made. But of, and, of, and of, the, of all the drugs, Peter... You interrupt me while sure. I, No, no, I, apologies. Go ahead. You question, then you interrupt me while I'm answering it. Do you Go want ahead. to listen? Or, or, or shall, I've got lots of other things I can say. <laughs> no, 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 I want if to listen. If you don't want to listen to my answer, I, I can easily go. <laughs> but if you're going to ask me a question, you must wait for the answer. You asked, where's the money coming from? I said... If you, if you go on the internet, look up the Los Angeles Times reports or anybody's reports of the campaign for the legalization of marijuana, Proposition 64 in California, and put the word billionaire in your search, you'll come up with some names. And there, are, there is huge amounts of money being made now in Colorado and other states in, in, in the United States where the, the sale and production of, of, of marijuana for recreational purposes has been legalized. These, there is a lot of money to be made out of it. If it became, if it became completely legal legalized in federal terms, so the money could go through banks, which it can't at the moment, then the, and, and, and if advertising were allowed, as, was, as, as it is under Proposition 64, then you have the makings of a huge business, completely comparable to the cigarette business, which, uh, which has destroyed so many lives uh, out, of, out of cynical greed, just as the marijuana lobby seeks to do. 
And it's, the similarity between big tobacco and big dope is, is enormous. And it's shocking to see people who will probably buy fair trade co- coffee and deeply disapprove of, of fast food outlets and sugary drinks, joining in, in the biggest greed lobby in the world right now for the legalization of marijuana, which they will bitterly regret once they've achieved it. But they, I, they, they seem determined to believe that it will be a good thing. It's a step into the third world. OK, Peter, I, 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 I'll let you answer. Uh, that wasn't quite the question I was asking. I was asking well, the question. If you don't think I've answered the question, then, then ask, ask it to me. I will always no, ask no, no, the no, no, that's fine. I was going to, I was going to ask you who's going to make the money when it becomes legalised. Because, and before you interrupt me, before. Uh, Mary, cannabis is one of the cheapest things to make. It's it's a plant. Anybody can grow it. So the idea, if it's legal, the idea that big business is going to come in and market it, yeah, there will be a bit of that, but also the state will make uh, a profit from taxes and being able to control it. But hey, people who don't want to pay for it will grow their own. So the idea that there's going to be this monopoly where people are going to make billions, just I'm afraid, just doesn't stand. Have you heard of, have you heard of the phrase straw man? Of course. When someone, when someone is arguing with someone else and, and claims that he said things he hasn't said, I haven't said anything about monopoly. Uh, you... But what I have said, and I, I can point, and anybody can go if they want to to Colorado or read the many reports in many newspapers about what's going on in Colorado at the moment, there is a substantial business now making substantial profits on legal marijuana there. And no doubt the same thing will, will, will be true in, in the other American states where it's been legalized. Considerable profits have been made out of the supposed medical marijuana provisions in many of the United States and the District of Columbia. Uh, where the the idea of medical has been stretched way beyond its limits to allow what's effectively the the, the legalization of of, uh, of marijuana for personal use. But so it's it's a very very big business. Okay, and it will get and it will get bigger. Okay, you ask you ask me who will profit from it? Those who invest in it will profit from it. Okay, there'll but be I... no reason there'll be no reason why they shouldn't. They'll be in exactly the same position as the tobacco companies, with one big difference: they'll be allowed to advertise, which big tobacco isn't. OK, but at the moment, you're still getting people buying cannabis and all that money, the same amount of money, is being trafficked around between drug lords, mm. uh, people who are up to other things rather than just drug trafficking. So your, your solution is to just leave it as is. That's... I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in solutions. I believe you can make things better than, than they are. Uh, I think that to, it, the, all crime is caused by law. Right. We didn't bother making. If we didn't bother making anything illegal, whether it be pro- are you in favour of prostitution, for instance, would you like that to be taxed and regulated? Uh, I, the reason why most people aren't is I would. They're disgusted. People, it, but well, then I think your, your attitude is disgusting. And, and I, 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 I think I, prostitution I, I should be legalised. Absolutely, it, but, yes, I do. But it, but it gives it gives a measure of your of your of your of your, of your moral position. And I'm yeah. You know, my moral I, position I, I'm is not, to protect I'm the not, women that are in that industry I and to make sure it. that they come to no harm. Well, I Which at the moment is because it's an unregulated industry, they do come to harm. I don't believe that legalising prostitution would achieve anything well, of Peter, the kind. It Peter, just, I, I it think... Just, it would just yeah. make it a much bigger business. Peter, but I do think you, it's interesting I, that you're not happy for big companies to profit, but you're actually happy for uh, illegal uh, transactions in, in the cannabis kind no, of I'm arena to take place. That is quite shocking, actually. Who said, who said, no, that's again, you know, it's another straw man. I said so I was happy. Uh, well, I say, if you if you want to prevent things from happening, and I was about to finish my point when you interrupted me, if you if you want to stop to 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 make things illegal because you disapprove of them, you think they're morally wrong and damaging, that means they will be in the hands of criminals. But if, for instance, the sale of cigarettes were only in the hands of criminals and had only been in the hands of criminals for the past hundred years, many many fewer people would smoke. Many, many fewer people would have died from cancer and emphysema and heart disease as a result. And although there might be gangsters involved, the damage done by the cigarette industry would have been much diminished. It's a choice you make. And I would say the same about marijuana. The other thing is, if you're really, really worried about gangsters, then you must speak to the people who supply those gangsters with the money. The people who illegally pay for, for an illegal drug, breaking the law as they do so, uh, and, 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 and pat themselves on the back for being so clever, of whom there are many, many thousands in this country, grossly selfish and irresponsible people. They are the mistakes of the drug trade, the people who buy the drugs. And they are the people who keep the flow of money to the drug dealers and to the, and to the cartels and who sustain one of the wickedest industries in the world, and they should be ashamed of themselves. 